Well, hello. Again, EMBC and those of you who watch us from around the world, we thank God for you on this New Year's Eve. It has been my honor, by the grace of God, to bring God's word to you the year of 2021. It's been a difficult year, but we thank God that his word has guided us every step of the way. And as we end this year, we thank God for your support. We thank God for your prayers. But most importantly, we thank God for Jesus, our Savior and our King. Tonight, as we share a word of encouragement to you virtually, we'll talk about three things about how God has sustained us, helped us, and held us together. Would you share this word with your family members as we reflect back on the hand of God and how he strengthened us physically and how he's walked with us psychologically and emotionally? Sybil and I and my family want to wish all of you a very blessed new year. And our desire for you is to grow in the power of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and be a light in the dark world. Watch us now. Call a family member and let them know we're on. Happy New Year. give God praise as we prepare to deliver our final thought for the year of 2021. What a joy it is to have you tuning in with us tonight or if you're watching at noon, we give God praise. I want to say to you tonight or this afternoon as we share with you some truths about our God, his sustaining power, no matter where you are or what you're going through, take confidence to know that God is with you, he cares for you, and he promised to uphold you with his strong right hand. How can we end the year and move forward to the next year without first, I think, reflecting on how good God has been to you and I. And when we pause to reflect, we look back at the goodness of God. We look back at the grace of God. And you and I must confess that God has been good. Today, tonight, I just want to reflect from a passage of scripture of people who were starting over but yet looking back at their history a history of how God was with them and how God had sustained them when you think about the word sustain it means to strengthen support to strengthen physically and many of you who are here you've been in odd places in 2021 most people are comparing 2020 
in 2021 and asking the question, what was the worst year? Well, I'm not an expert and I can't tell you that. But what I can tell you is that whether it was 2020 or 2021, God has sustained us and gave you and I the physical strength that we need to endure 2020 when the virus and pandemic hit. 2020 when many of us buried loved ones unexpectedly. But he also had sustained us and gave us physical strength in 2021. That word sustain means to strengthen. But it also means to support. And as I look at ways God has strengthened and supported us, he not only strengthens us physically, but he has supported us in 2021 mentally. Many of us have been overwhelmed. And we're like the psalmist in Psalms 55. We would love to take the wings of the dove and fly away and be at rest. But unfortunately, there's not been a hiding place for us to fly away from it all. And when I talk about sustaining us physically and mentally, let me say to you that if it had not been for God, some of us would have literally had a breakdown. And tonight or this afternoon, whenever you're doing this tape, if you don't remember any word going into the next year and closing out 21, 2021, Remember that God has supported you physically, supported you mentally, and sustained you. That, that word, when you lean into it deeper, I'll give you a few biblical examples in just a second. It means that we have been able to bear up under the weight. To bear up under the weight of it all. Because God's hand has helped us, held us, and uphold us. It's a word that means pressure and weight on you, around you, and most importantly, in you. But yet, God has held you together and sustained you. And kept you from breaking up. When we look at the Bible. There are important examples from scripture. And today if you're watching at noon or tonight in Nehemiah chapter number 9. There's a passage where by the children of Israel. Had built the wall after returning from captivity. And they begin to recount and, and confess their sins and worship God and celebrate him for all that he had done. And in my mind, they couldn't do that unless they reflected, evaluated the hand of God in their lives through history. Today, as we come to the end of 2021, I don't just want you to reflect on 2020 and 2021. The lesson from Nehemiah 9 is for us to always revisit, remember, reevaluate how God has sustained us through life. Beloved, you're not here by yourself. And you have not been able to win on your own. It's only because God has stepped up, filled in, held you together. Because there is no way you could do it on your own strength. The Indianapolis coach played the Arizona Cardinals on 
Christmas Day. And there were several of their leading players who had the virus. And most people were saying there is no way they could win without Leonard, the leading defensive guy in Nelson, and those other players that was on the sideline because they had the virus. And yet, it was those guys who stepped in who who were on the sideline, who got in the game and helped lead them to victory. What I want to say to you, you have to understand that God has always stepped in for you. He, there's no way that you could win when you contracted several different things in your life. And Israel knew it. And they did not want to move forward without reflecting on God's sustaining power. In verses 9 and 12, you have uh, this prayer of praise in confession as they reevaluate and reflect on how God had helped them during the Exodus. And in verses 19 through 21, there's a section as they remember how God had took care of them as they wander through the wilderness. Let me give you some principles to chew on with your family as you move over to the new year on how God has sustained you as you reflect and remember God's goodness. In verses number 11 through 13, they talk about how God has sustained them by guiding them. When you look at these verses, it says, You divided the sea before them, so that they passed through it on dry ground. But you hurtled their pursuit into the depths like a stone into mighty water. By day you led them with a pillar of cloud, and by night with a pillar of fire. To give them light on the way they were to take. You came down on Mount Sinai. You spoke to them from heaven. You gave them regulations and laws that are just and right. And decrees and commands that are good. This reflection of the group of people who return from captivity. They're being intentional about reflecting on God's guidance as they were at their Red Sea moment. And some of us need to understand that God still sustains. When you have a Red Sea in front of you, He'll guide you. And so as we talk about and think through ending this year. You ought to pause and praise God as you reflect on him strengthening you, supporting you, and guiding you this year. Lord, how could we make it with all of the red seas in front of us? How else would we survive? If God didn't guide us. I love when he talks about verse 12. Not only does God guide us through the Red Seas. When the waters are so deep. And we're afraid to get in. God gives us light in the night. 12 talks about a pillow of cloud in the night. And a fire to them. To light the way. As they travel. God guides us when red seas are in front of us. But oh beloved God guides us when the night of life. Has swooped in on us. And I must confess there's been some night. In 2021. When you and I could not really see. What was in front of us. 
We couldn't see how we were going to get through the night of depression. The night of death. And the night of the unforeseen. But God guided us. When you look at this from a historical point of view, they are reflecting on the history of God's hand. First, they said there was a seed that they couldn't get through, and God had to help them. He sustained them through it. But then they said there was the night season of wondering, not knowing where they were going, but yet God came down and he let them. And I say it's, it's been night. As a pastor, I've had to walk through people who had unexpected deaths and night came in their lives. It's been night. We pray for people who had the virus and they came through. And some people who didn't make it, I'm telling you, God guided us because it's been night. It's been night. Because people you loved and you thought you were going to be with forever and then they walked out on you and you don't know what to do. And we have to, we have to trust God to sustain us in the night seasons of our lives. And I got to tell you this, because you are a Christian, the Bible is loaded with people who have been dealing with the night. It was a night when Jeremiah wrote the book of Lamentations and he was weeping and he said it is of the Lord's mercy that we're not consumed. But, but God guide us with his compassion because his compassion fell of not in great is his faithfulness toward us. The Bible is loaded with people who have to deal with the night. It was a night when, when Paul was uh, on the ship not knowing whether or not he was going to make it to shore and they had to throw some things overboard. But then he said, but nevertheless, the Lord stood with me. God will guide you through the night. In 2021, loss of job, loss of health, loss of family. But this scripture teaches us that as God guided Israel, he will guide you. And they were talking about how God guided them. Some of you have said, that's good, God. I want to thank you for sustaining me by guiding me. And as you close this year out, if you can't get your praise on with your family anywhere else, you ought to pause and thank him for guiding you through the Red Seas that was in front of you and guiding you uh, in the night seasons of your life. And some of us are still going through the night. But the second thing I want to say to you is that God sustains not only by guiding us, but God sustains by providing for us. When you look back at this text in verse number 15, it says, In their hunger you gave them bread from heaven. In their thirst you brought them water from the rock. You told them to go and take possessions of the land. And you had sworn to uplift them with your hand. He told them to go, I like this, and take possession of the land you had sworn with, and you uplifted them with your hand. Let me say this to you. God provides for us in the most difficult ways. Remember, he was talking about the Exodus, and he was talking about how God gave them food and bread. I need to say this to you. God takes care of us. And you know how they said God did it? He opened up the heaven and he gave it to them. If you are in your wilderness and you can't see your way through, I want to say this. God sustains. What old people used to say, he makes a way out of no way. This is a classic example of how God provides for you when you're in your wilderness experience by opening up heaven to you. I want to say to those of you who are feeling alone and you don't alone and you don't think that 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 you, you don't know how you're gonna make ends meet, you don't know that you don't know how things are gonna turn out, just know that you serve a God. Who makes a way out of no way. And he provides everything you need. 
Now these are people who are dealing with history. They're looking back at what God had brought them through. They had returned from captivity. They had built the wall. God had gave them the supplies that they needed. And they said, I want to tell those of you who are going into 2021, leaving 2021, and going into 2022, I want to tell you that God guides and God provides. And that's about all I really need to tell you. Is that trust the testimony of God's people. That he guides that he provides. We don't know what tomorrow holds. But one thing you know is that he guides and he provides. Ask Joseph. Joseph, listen, was sold into slavery and it was no uh, doing of his own. But the clear illustration without giving you a contemporary illustration is that God guided this man and he provided for this man. He guided him, even though he was in Potiphar's house. Then he went to jail. God guided him. And some of us, maybe in a house that we don't want to be in, but God guides us. Some of us may be in, a, in prison, in jail, but God guides us. And then when you read the end of Joseph's story, God provides for us. He went from being in jail to being the second in charge of Egypt because God guides and God provides. And all I'm saying to those of you who are dealing with trouble, trials, and tribulations today, that God guides and God provides. All I'm saying to those of you who are dealing with afflictions that God died and God provides. All I'm saying to those of you who are in the battle of going through death, depression, and disconnection. God guides and God provides. And as we talk about ending um, um, 2021, you got to remember that the only way you made it is because God has sustained you by guiding and by providing. So I don't know where you are this year and you're with your families and you're with your friends. Just know that we serve a God who guides and provides. And maybe you can't get happy on that. But the only way I've been able to make it is because God's supporting hand, God's strong hand, God's right hand. And I love what David also says to illustrate this. He says, even though a man fall, God uphold him with his hand. Well, as I conclude for this New Year's message, you need to understand that God not only sustains us, I love it, by guiding and providing, God not only uh, provides for us, but can I say one more thing? God pardons us. And some of us are going to end the year, and you could, you, if you don't watch it, you'll end the year in guilt. But God will pardon you. Somebody's watching me. You've done so much wrong in your life and you don't know how you can get out of it. I want to say this to you. We serve a God who will pardon us regardless of what we're going through. How do I know that God, God provides and pardon? Look at verse number 17. In verse number 17 it says, They refuse to listen and fail to remember the miracles you performed among them. They became stiff-necked. In their rebellion, appointed a leader in order to return to their slavery. But you are a forgiving God. I said he pardons us. Gracious in compassion, slow to anger, abounding in love. Therefore, you did not, did not desert them. God pardons us. And I guess I can conclude since you're watching at home. God guides, God provides. But you know what? How many of y'all know that you've been stiff-necked this year? We've done some things we shouldn't do. we said some things we shouldn't do. We, we, we've acted in a manner that God was not pleased. Matter of fact, this verse says when you look at the history of God's people, they were outright stiff-necked. But God sustained them. He held them up. And he held them together. By partnering with them. And I want to say to you in closing. I'm not done. But those are three things you can chew on. I don't care what you've done this year. You can be forgiven. 
you can be forgiven. Along with God's partnering you, you know what? He's been patient. God sustained you by partnering you, forgiving you, but he also sustains by being patient with you. I want to challenge you to turn your life toward him. I want to challenge you to give your life to him. The Apostle Paul knows what it means to be pardoned because he was stiff necked, a Pharisee. But he said, I am what I am by the grace of God. And he realized that he put his faith in God and he began to write, I'm saved by grace through faith. I don't care how dirty he's been. I don't care how dirty you've been. God will pardon you and set you free to start your year right with him. And beloved, that's what I believe. I believe some of us need to get off to the right start by ending this year right by getting right with God and I'm so thankful Lord that he's pardoned me he's forgave me time and time again and you know what he, because he pardoned me he set me free from sin and gave me another chance to cast my cares upon him God has sustained you and I by guiding us, by providing for us, by partnering us, by being patient with us. And that's the word to end this year. In the darkest times of our lives, with all of the Red Seas in front of us, he's held us together. He's helped us to bear up under the weight. And he'll do it. Not just in 2020 and 2021. Israel looked at their history. And he says that God. Has always. Been there. Getting them through. And taking them to. The place that he would have them be. Would you bow your heads with your family. And say God tonight. I just want to thank you. For guiding me. But most importantly. For partnering me. When I didn't even miss. And just for being patient. Thank God for. Giving you life in your life. And then celebrate him. If he did it. For Israel. Maybe you need to give your life to Jesus Christ. Let me show you how to be part. Just say, Lord, I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead. Save me. Maybe you need to say to the Lord, Lord, I want to come back to you. I've seen so much. But Pastor Webster said, if you dealt with stiff-necked people like Israel, you can help me today. And if you do that, beloved, you can end this year well. And if it, by the grace of God you make it in 2022, you can start it now. If you gave your life to Jesus Christ, please let us know. 317-546-8131. Have a happy.